Hey Orbiters, Nick here with the Orbital Alliance. Welcome to today's video, and today I want you to check out this photo. This was a photo I took back in June of 2020. This is, of course, a photo of the sun, but on it you'll notice that there are several dots in a line going across the surface, and those dots are all the International Space Station. And this is what you would call a solar transit, where from your location on Earth, the sun, fixed in the sky has the space station going right across it. And if you're in the right place at the right time, snapping pictures with a camera, you can get a photo like this. This is sport to me. This is fun and I love to go out and shoot photos like this. I've done it several times and had a lot of success. You can also do this with the moon and I've done that as well. So what you do is you take several photos in rapid succession, usually in one second or less, and then you go into post, put them all together into a composite, and you get a photo like I just showed you. So what I wanna do today is I wanna throw you back to June 2020. I shot some video footage and I never used it for anything, and I think it was made for this video. I just didn't quite know it yet. So I'm gonna throw it back to Nick in June 2020, and he's gonna tell you all about how we got that photo. Today, we are pursuing a solar transit of the International Space Station. So the International Space Station is going to pass the sun. In this case, today, it's a beautiful, perfectly clear blue sky, exactly what you want. No clouds blocking the sun. I've had a lot of bad mistakes where, uh, well, not mistakes, but the clouds have come in and kind of botched my viewing. But uh, today I'm prepared, I'm ready to go. I got two minutes until this solar transit. 0.74 seconds it's going to take the space station to cross the plane of the sun. One chance. So we'll see how it goes, and I am very excited to see the results. So International Space Station crossing the sun. Let's do it. So I thought I'd go over which gear I'm using to make this happen. Uh, so first, what you need is a tripod, something to keep yourself stable. Make sure you're not bumping it. Uh, at any point, make sure wind is out of the way. I actually have my car door here shielding me uh, from the wind that's coming from the other direction over there. Um, you don't want any wind shake or any wobble. Um, you also need a camera, so a DSLR or mirrorless camera, or even a video camera that shoots at a very high frame rate. So some of you, some of you are pursuing a goal where you just want to get one frame, but I think the ultimate goal is really to get a streak of frames across the sun or in, or in the moon, whatever you're trying to do. So you need a, uh, a DSLR or mirrorless camera. I'm shooting with a Sony a7 III. It's got a burst rate of about seven frames per second in high plus mode. Um, additionally, you don't want to be touching the camera when you push the trigger here. So you want to have a remote shutter release or a, just a remote trigger. So I have a wireless remote which sends to this trans, uh, this receiver here, transmits a signal to this receiver uh, to fire. So it sounds like this. So take some photos just by pressing the big fat button on here and set to high plus mode on my camera for maximum photo capture. And on the front end, we've got, I'm using a Sigma contemporary 150 to 600 telephoto. And this gives you the reach you need what you want is probably at least 600 millimeters, probably no less. You could get less, but you just see a shape. If you want detail in the space station, you want to go for 600 millimeters or more. It's better off if you're using a telescope that can give you 1,000 or 1,200 millimeter simulated lens. Um, and then the last thing you need, especially if you're shooting the sun, is a solar filter. This is my 8-inch refractor, a reflector telescope solar filter but uh, I, just, I don't have one for my, my lens here, so what I do is I just carefully hold it in front, careful not to puncture the little mirror film on the, on the front end there. Um, I just have to be extra careful. So I hold that in front, uh, kind of like this. Um, it's just a jerry-rigged way of doing it, but uh, I just keep it like that, hold my trigger in the other hand, I'm not touching the tripod, not touching, touching the camera, and then when I'm going, I'm ready to go. So uh, what I do though, when it's time for the actual shoot is I, uh, I look on isstransitfinder.com, find my location, find the specific spot, and I find the place that's closest to the middle of the path that it's gonna go. You can go too far over and too far over in either direction to the point where you won't see it anymore. So you have to be in the flight path of the, of the space station. I like to get to the middle, the center line, uh, because that gives you the maximum number of frames to capture. The closer you are to the edges, the fewer frames you're gonna get. So. Uh, what I do then is I, uh, I find the exact time to the second and even the millisecond of when the station is going to transit the sun or the moon and then I pull up an app. There's a free app, Atomic Clock. Uh, I have it on Android. It's probably available for all 
um, all phones, Android, iPhone. So download that for free. You want accurate time, time accurate to the internet that you can get on your phone as you're out on location. Uh, you do not want to rely on a watch uh, because if you miss the space station, crossing the sun or the moon, you are gonna miss it. Uh, there is absolutely no going back, and you've missed the opportunity if you were even a second off. I've done it, I've messed up. So <laughs> learn from me, uh, always have an atomic clock. So I just keep that on my phone handy to the side, and then I'm just watching, and as I know the exact time, so for instance, if, if the space station was coming at 3.10 p.m. at uh, 3.10 and 56 seconds, like it did today, what I do is I start counting down verbally from 10, 10 seconds ahead of the time. So at 3, 10, 46, I start counting down from 10. So this is how it goes. I, I usually give myself about five seconds or so, give or take, of range before and after the transit time, just to make sure. I make sure I have a high speed card in my camera that can write data quickly and can save quickly and can deal with the buffer on my camera for capturing high raw quality images. It's another loud car. Uh, so what I do then is I count down from 10 like this. So I go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, burst, 2, 1, transit, 1, 2, release. That gives me about five seconds of capture error. It gives me room for error. My camera's firing constantly. So if it'd be like this, it'd be like 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero, one, two. And I just took about probably 60 more pictures and they're all gonna be black because I'm aiming at nothing the lens cap is on. So that's my tactic. That's how I shoot transits of the space station in front of the sun or the moon. Obviously the solar filter is critical for solar transits. The moon, you don't need it. Just need to get your shutter speed sharp enough to capture the space station's details. Um, settings will change wherever you are. Um, my camera settings in particular right now um, for this particular day, and I have not seen what I've taken, but uh, I set the shutter speed to one over 4,000 to get those super crisp, super sharp solar panels. You don't want to get it any slower than probably 1,600, maybe 2,000, just because that's going to give you blurriness, fuzziness, uh, fudged solar panels. Um, I'm shooting at f11 just to make sure that I've got enough of a focal plane. Don't open up too wide, otherwise you're going to give yourself an, um, a ton of issues with your, your focus. And then you also have your ISO. I mine at 200. You can keep it pretty low. The sun is the uh, brightest source of light in the entire system, so uh, don't don't think like you need to open that up at all. You just keep it tame. Let the sun do the work for you, casting the shadow to you. Um, keep your shutter speed fast, ISO low, and then work with the f-stop in between to get the right exposure. I always set mine for just a little bit underexposed because you can always boost it later in post. Um, if you overexpose, you can't get the station back, at least not the detail. You might be able to see a shape, but the detail is definitely going to be out the window. So just a couple tips and tricks from me. I've done this a couple times. Failed more than I've been successful, but uh, I'm slowly creeping back up there. I've gotten a lot of successes under my belt now because I've learned from from how I've messed up. So uh, good luck as you go out on your travels to capture some photos of the International Space Station. All right, so this is the absolute best part. This is the part where you get to verify if you nailed the transit or not. You come in your car, pull out your camera, maybe pull out your computer, load up your card and review your photos. So here's what I do. This is the jank way of doing it. I've got my camera here. I'm gonna just go through it and figure it out. What I have here is a bunch of photos, clicking through them, got the sun. I'm gonna punch in, there's nothing there. Nothing there. Punch back out. Go to the next frame. Oh, what's that there? I see a little dot right there. A tiny little dot. Let's punch in. Oh yeah, that's a space station. That's a very well-defined space station right there. To me, it actually looks like the best, uh, best photo I've taken yet. So I'm pretty happy with that. So if I uh, punch back out here, punch through it here, or uh, not punch, I keep using the word punch. I'm not punching anybody. Um, I'm gonna scrub through. You can see the dot scooting along as I go left, left, left. So let's see how many we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, seven, that's about right. 0.74 seconds from that transit. Success, well done, well done team, we did it. So hopefully you guys have some, uh, some great success pursuing this. Weather plays a huge factor in it. You gotta get lucky. So gonna go home, I'm gonna edit these make a sweet photo 
uh, composite. That's the word I'm looking for. Photo composite of all seven of those frames in a row. So you see all seven of them. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see the rest of them. So again, Godspeed and happy hunting. Well, thanks for watching today's video, everybody. Hopefully you were able to learn something about shooting solar transits. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments section below. And if you did learn something, I would appreciate it if you liked this video and shared it with your friends. If you want to join the Orbital Alliance, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. And until the next video, Orbiters, I will see you on the other side.